Hi, I'm Ali. Today, I'm going to read you a story called Back to the Future. Are you ready to listen? Okay, I'm going to read you the story. Back to the Future. This is Marty McFlay. It is 1985, and Marty lives in a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley is a friendly town with a courthouse that's famous because of its broken clock. The clock stopped 30 years ago after it was struck by lightning. Today, the people of Hill Valley want to make sure the clock is per preserved. Marty's best friend is a scientist named Dr. Emmett Brown, and Marty calls him Doc. Doc is always making cool inventions like an automatic dog food feeder and a giant guitar and fleefer. But Marty's life at home is not cool. Ma Marty's parents, George and Lorraine, don't seem to love each other. His brother David and his sister Linda are always arguing. And George has a mean boss named Biff Tannen. Biff is a bully. He always pushes George around and makes him do extra work. Marty wishes his father would stop up to Biff, but George doesn't have the courage. One night, Doug leaves the newest invention to Marty. He's built a time machine in a car. Uh, the way I see it, Doc explains, if you're going to build a time machine to a car, why not do it with some style? The time machine uses a special fuel named plutonium. When Marty test drove the time machine, he accidentally time traveled to 1955, 30 years earlier. It was long time before the mall had been built and, bef and, before, wait a minute, and, and before the time machine had been invented. Marty knew he had to get home, so he hit the time machine and went to search for young Doc Brown. Hopefully, the time machine inventor could help him get back to the future. Marty discovered that, that Hill Valley looked very different in 1955. The cars looked different, the clothes looked different, but the clock was working fine because it was still one week before the lightning bolt would strike. Before Marty could find young Doc Brown, he found his parents at a soda shop in 1955. Five, George and Lorena were teenagers, just like Marty. And that bully Biff was still pushing poor George around and making him do his homework. And Marty defended George and accidentally interfered with their parents' romance. Now, Lorena liked Marty because he stood up to Biff. This was a problem. If George and Lorena didn't fall in love and marry, how could they ever have kids? Marty looked at a photo of himself with his brother and his sister. Dave and Linda were starting to disappear as if they'd been, they'd never been born. Marty located the house of young Dr. Brown and introduced himself. My name is Marty and I'm from the future. I came here in a time machine that you invented. That And now I need 1.21 gigawatts of, of electricity to get back to the year of 1985. Doc didn't believe him. So Marty took Doc to the time machine, but Doc had bad news. There's no plutonium in in 1955, and only a bolt of light lightning can generate that kind of power. Unfortunately, we never know when or where where lightning will strike. Marty told Doc the story of the clock tower. The lightning bolt would strike in in just a few days. Doc quickly put together a plan. If we can harness the energy from the lightning, we can send you back to the future. All right, 
A wire in the street from the clock tower down the street. Lightning strikes clock over at exactly 10.4 p.m. 1.21 gigawatts of electricity travel down the wire. Car travels at 88 miles per hour. Hook touches wire and sends electricity into Fox Capacitor. But Marty, Doc says, before you leave 1955, Fifty-five. You have to make sure your parents fall in love. Other, other, otherwise, you and your brother and sister will be never born. Marty spent the time of the day, days trying to make his parents fall in love. Marty begged George to invite Lorena to the school dance. Though George liked Lorena, he was too shy to ask her. Marty checked the photo again and saw that he was starting to fade away too. He had to do something. Marty remembered that his father liked science fiction, so that night Marty sneaked up to George's bedroom dressed like an alien. I am Darth Vader from planet Vulcan, Marty said. If you don't invite Lorian to the school dance, I will make your helmet melt your brain. And the trick worked. George found a cor courage to speak to Lorena. But Marty knew he'd also have to teach George to find the courage to stand up for himself. Things worked out perfectly. George liked Lorena so much that he stood up for her to protect her from beef. And that's not and that night George and Lorena danced, kissed and fell in love. Marty's plan being worked. And just in time too, because that that very night, lightning was going to strike the clock tower. Doc put his plan in motion. He attached a giant wire to the clock. While well, Marty Marty started down the street, speeding up to eighty eight miles per hour. But then the tree fell on the wire, snapping it. Doc raced down to the foot of the cable of the clock, struck ten four. Doc connected the cables just as Mari dove over them and lightning struck the clock tower. The electricity told the flux capture and the time machine returned to 1985. Mari was safe in his own time. Now because George had learned to stand up for himself, things at home were very different. George and Lauren, Lorena loved each other. His brother Dave and his sister Linda didn't argue anymore. And Biff never bullied George again. In fact, now Biff wor worked for George. I'm almost finished waxing your car, Mr. McFly. And George even published a science fiction novel. It was based on a dream, dream he had when he was just a teenager. At least, George thought it was a dream. From that day on, Marty and Doc had many more exciting adventures in the past, present, present, and future. Okay, and this is the end of the end of the story. Okay, and thank you for seeing my story. Bye. This is a little weird sound. Bye.